Rebecca. Any corrections? All those in favor? They are accepted. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. This is the time that we put in here for people like Jane Amro and the rest that want, have, <laughs> that want to say something. Why, Photo this is one. the time or you don't get another chance. Say something, Jane. I know you want. <laughs> I know you want. <laughs> Seeing you off at the invitation, Irv, I just wanted to say, come from Augusta and say hello to all of you and let you know that uh, if there's any legislation that you're interested in that you would like to talk about, uh, just give me a call. I'd be happy to do that. And I'll keep you posted on what's happening with school funding as soon as we know what we're going to do with it up there. Right now, it's still very much up in the air and uh, all kinds of possibilities. So I'll keep you posted on that really important issue. Thank you. Well, thank you. Reports and correspondence. Right here is a good time to wish everybody here and everybody watching a happy Valentine's from everybody on the council to all of you. Are there any other reports? I'll take uh, Councillor McLaughlin. I didn't realize you were giving a report, sir. <laughs> um, Greater Portland Council of Government's Executive Committee meets tomorrow evening at 5.30. The topic is assessing issues. The presenter is Jerry Daigle. That's so highly. He has done that kind of presentation for GP Cog in the past, and is a very informative and interesting presentation. He's very highly thought of about the, um, by the members. On Thursday evening, the Mayors and Chairs group is putting on the second part of a two-part series. The first part was a mock trial, which was just drama at its highest. If those of you who know Bill Dale was the judge, played the judge, and had a wonderful time in that role. And Ann Pringle played one of the um, people before the judge and also was a great thespian. This second session is done in the mode of alternative dispute resolution, which I noted in the manager's goals for the next year, so I would encourage any other counselors to attend that, to get up to speed on that. If you're as unknow unknowing about it as I am, it will prove to be an interesting session. Thank you. Manager McGovern? Yes, uh, thank you, sir. I just wanted to mention that we sent out tax bills last week, and the, re the reason I want to mention that is uh, a number of citizens have noted uh, that the tax due date is no longer the first week of May, it's the first week of April. Uh, we have received four telephone calls at the town office with folks expressing concern uh, with the change. Uh, what we have uh, told the folks that have called is that the tax due dates are now six months apart rather than seven months and five months and that that was the primary reason for the change. Uh, I have indicated to everyone who has called that I would keep the council informed uh, on the number of calls we receive uh, expressing concern and uh, uh, otherwise, you know, evaluating that topic uh, as time goes on, particularly as we look towards next year. Thank you. Councilor Dahlbeck. If I am correct, uh, those changes were uh, uh, duly publicized in the Cape Courier and what have you. That's correct. They were in last July, I believe. Thank you. Councilor Jordan? I just want to ask a question that uh, the bright lights aren't shining down on us tonight. Uh, is it a problem or is this something new? I, I was wondering the same thing. Uh, <laughs> okay. There we are. Uh, Do we need them? <laughs> That's the one time I wish you'd have kept quiet. <laughs> so, so far we've been oper operating in the dark and much better that way. <laughs> Any other reports? <laughs> if I may, I have one letter that we're all going to sign tonight that I'd like to just read and put on the record. To the uh, members of Engine One Company, dear Captain Williams, a member of Engine One Company, we wish to thank each of you for all the time and effort you have devoted to improving the appearance of the Engine One fire station. The trim and other surfaces have never looked better. The inside is clean and bright. Your steady progress has improved the station and has saved the town many dollars from avoiding the cost of hiring outside contractors. Thank you for your continued support of the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department and your dedication to the community. We're signing that tonight and it will be sent to Captain Robert Williams. Hearing no other reports or correspondence, we'll move right into item number 129. Yes. 
I um, ask to be excused from participating in this particular item because I'm in a clutter of the property involved, and my husband's firm also represents one of the mortgage holders. Thank you. To consider granting a quick claim deed to Kimberly A. and Robert C. Davis for property located at 340 Ocean House Road and take any necessary action. Ms. Lane. Thank you very much. As your packet indicated, we're asking that this item be tabled this evening. Uh, currently, we're in the process of notifying one additional mortgage holder that we were notified that has an interest in the property. They have 30 days in which to act upon the notice. Uh, the 30 days would be up on March 14th which is a Monday, so that we would ask that this be tabled until the March Council meeting, which will be held on Wednesday, March 16th. Thank you. All those in favor? So signify. 6-0, thank you. There's no motion. Oh, I didn't have a motion. Details. Are you going to table get right to it? We have a motion on number 129, then we can vote again. So moved. I'll second the previous vote. All those in favor? 6-0. Item number 130, to consider granting a quick claim deed to Rick Weinscheck and Company for property located at 20 Park Circle and take any necessary action. Ms. Lane. Thank you. We have received full payment for the 1992, 93, and 94 taxes on this property. We would request that you authorize the town manager to sign a quick claim deed. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? 7-0, thank you. Item number 131, to consider a report from the Appointments Committee regarding vacancies on various town boards, commissions, and committees, and take any necessary action. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Council's Appointments Committee consists of Councilor Linnell, Councilor Marvin, and myself as chairman. We had a wonderful time interviewing a lot of people the good news is we think we have some very fine people to recommend to the council to fill the openings on our boards and commissions. The unfortunate news is we could not place everybody who applied. We had a number of positions where we had two to three times the number of applicants that we had available openings. And we sincerely regret that we could not place all the people who did apply. For those whose names are not put forward tonight, please be assured that we keep those names on file, keep your applications on file for the rest of this calendar year. It's not at all uncommon for openings to come up during the year. That's the pool of applicants that we go back to when we're filling those unexpected vacancies. The council has been provided with, I guess, five or six pages of our proposed recommendations. I would like to go through these, especially for the public's sake and for the sake of those being appointed. For planning board, we are recommending the reappointment of Thomas Emery for his second three-year term. Tom is currently vice chairman of the board and serves on the process <coughs> review committee. We are also recommending reappointment of Stephen Etzel for his second three-year term. Steve is currently the chairman of the planning board and he too serves on the process review committee. We have two associate members currently for the planning board. We recommend the reappointment of Peter Cotter for his second one-year term. Peter has said that he really enjoys um, being involved in the board's work and looks forward to continuing as an associate member for the time being. <laughs> we recommend the appointment to associate member of Roy Carlson. This is to replace Bob Marvin in that um, position. Bob has resigned. Roy has served on the finance board and the board of assessment in Pelham, Massachusetts. He is retired and does have real estate background. The Zoning Board of Appeals we are recommending that Robert Smith be appointed as a regular member for his first three-year term. This is to replace Larry Clough, who has served two consecutive terms, who has been a very valuable member of our Board of Appeals. Rob was appointed as an associate, you'll remember, just last December. For the second regular member appointment, we are recommending Martha Kelly. This is to replace Bruce Sarbeck who also has served two consecutive terms and again has been a very valuable member. We're losing a lot of institutional memory in the zoning board. I don't know if they'd like to be called institutions, but I think in some people's minds they've become that. Martha is an attorney and does have some experience in um, this kind of appeals. It'll be fun for her, I hope, to be on the other side. For associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, we are recommending Howard Sayer. This is to replace Robert Smith. 
I was very gratified when Howard mentioned that he had been attracted to apply by reading the articles in the Cape Courier. I was glad we'd done that series. <laughs> we got a, certainly got a good person out of it. Um, he is retired and commented that he was past the age of giving us his resume <laughs> and did talk with us about the importance of having a strong zoning board. The second associate member we're recommending is Glenn Bickford. This is to replace Linda Jacobs, who is not seeking reappointment. Glenn is an installer for Ninex and has been interested in becoming involved in town affairs. For Conservation Commission, Commission hmm, we're recommending the reappointment of Jack Roberts. Jack's first term was one of our last five-year term appointments. Um, as most people know, we have three-year terms now. Uh, Jack has chaired the commission, and he's been very instrumental over the past year, especially in the work on the trail down at Great Pond. We're recommending also a new member for that conservation commission, John Green, for his first three-year term. This is to replace Gary Weaver. Gary's not seeking reappointment. John is currently serving on the process review committee, and when I spoke, I did, opportunity to speak today to the chairman of the Conservation Commission, Pat Carroll, and he reminded me that John Green has been attending meetings of that commission for the past three months just as a guest because of his interest in the commission's work. For Riverside Memorial Cemetery trustees, we are recommending Ray Hutchinson for a second three-year term. When Ray was initially appointed to the uh, trustees of the cemetery, I remember quite vividly she was a bit distressed because this was not her one of her choices, but she very nicely shared with us the fact that she has grown to greatly enjoy the work that those trustees do, and she's very enthusiastic about continuing with that group. For Community Services Advisory Commission, we are recommending the reappointment of Russell Erickson for his second three-year term. Russ is also very active in the community in Boy Scouts, Cub Scout level, and in Little League, and spoke, we talked with him about um, the responsibility of um, commissioners to bring community comments back for the other um, commissioners and the staff to be aware of. For the recycling committee, we are recommending the reappointment of Joanne Daigle to her second year, to her second three-year term. Joanne has been chairman of this committee for the past year. She um, very su successfully obtained a grant for the recycling containers that we heard about at our last council meeting. We're also recommending the reappointment of Carol Fritz to her second three-year term. Carol, as most of you know, is a very strong participant in the League of Women Voters, and I remember back in my active league days, and Jane and Phyllis also, that um, Carol's had a very long-standing interest in the environment and environmental issues. We are recommending the appointment of Patricia Twitchell for the uncompleted term of David Murray. This would be I think it, I've got it down as a three-year term. And yeah, for a three-year term, um, David Murray has resigned. This was not um, Pat's first choice for a committee, but um, after a good discussion with her, she was very eager to be involved in that committee, which is one of our very active groups right now. We also recommend the appointment of Lynn Jones to a first three-year term on recycling committee. Interestingly, Lynn has been on this committee in the past. It's nice to see someone be on a committee, go off for a while, and then want to go back on with some fresh ideas. And Lynn will be replacing Nancy Miles, who is not seeking reappointment. The fourth appointment for Recycling Committee, we are recommending Scott Collins. This is to replace Bridget um, Kingsbury, who is resigning. Scott is a new, new resident in town. He's an environmental engineer. For Area Development Council, we are recommending the appointment of the same Scott Collins. This is a one-year term. This is to replace Lou Sorellis, who did not ask to be reappointed. We think this will be a very good fit with Scott's already participation, his current participation in the Portland Chamber of Commerce. For Thomas Memorial Library Trustees, we recommend the appointment of Mary Beth Takash for her second three-year term. Mary Beth is an advocate for the library in general, and she wants to explore possibilities for children's programming. We also recommend the appointment of Ruth Griffin. This would be Ruth's first three-year term, and this is to replace Janet Hawks, who has served two consecutive terms. Ruth has an MLS, a Master's in Library Science, and has worked in public school libraries. She is now retired. 
For the Cable Television Advisory Committee, we recommend the appointment of John McGinty to his first three-year term. This is to replace Kathleen Harris, who did not seek reappointment. John works for the Cape Elizabeth Police Department, and he hopes to explore the full potential of the cable channel. Personnel Appeals Board, we recommend the reappointment of Robert Packer. Um, Bob has been on the committee. This will be his second three-year term. We talked with him about the need of an annual work session for that board to stay abreast of its responsibilities, and I understand that's already in the works from, for the staff member in charge of dealing with that board. For the Arts Commission, we are recommending two reappointments. One is of Claudia Finkelstein to her second three-year term. Claudia is currently a co-chairman of this group, and she has been responsible for developing and organizing the very successful Mardi Gras program we've had for the past three or four years. I'm not sure which. I'm embarrassed by that. I know Mardi Gras here was yesterday. And also the reappointment of Jane Snerson for her second three-year term. Jane is a retired art therapist, and she's very dedicated to bringing arts into the community. For Seward Ordinance Advisory Committee, this is one we have recently renamed to reflect what we foresee their work being for the current year. We are recommending reappointment of Greg Powell to serve his second three-year term. Greg had a very frank discussion with us on the Appointments Committee. He encourages the town to pay close attention to its sewer policies and to its relationship with the Portland Water District. And I think this is something we're following up on a bit tonight with an upcoming agenda item. We also recommend the reappointment of Gary Puntsky. Gary would be serving his second three-year term. We talked about, with Gary about the responsibilities of this committee, and he emphasized that he always strives to be fair and practical when um, dealing with the issues that are before that group. For Fort Williams Advisory Commission, we are recommending two reappointments and one new member. The first reappointment is, is that of Jeff Van Fleet for his second three-year term. Jeff is currently secretary of the commission and told us of his interest in promoting the trust fund for the park. Barbara Sanborn, we are also recommending for reappointment to her second three-year term. Barbara says she looks forward to continuing work on the policies and the ordinances relating to the fort. And for the new member, we're recommending appointment of John Chapman to his first three-year term. This would be to replace Nancy Johnson, who has served two consecutive terms. John is assistant U.S. attorney. He's interested in maintaining the fort's beauty and character. I've just got to say he had some wonderful tales about some of his adventures as a child or young adult in the fort, some of which we probably can't share over the year with people. <laughs> we had a great time talking with him about it. We currently have three positions unfilled, one on Board of Assessment Review and two of Board of Historic Preservation. We continue to work um, and we'll ex expect to have some recommendations for you. Um, possibly at least one by next month along those lines. The council in December, I believe, or January, sometime recently, um, called for the creation of the Thomas Jordan Trust Implementation Committee. This is to be a seven-member committee who has a defined responsibility to look at the court, or the, the settlement that we have made already, the agreement that we're in relating to the trust, the people being recommended for that committee are Phyllis Cogsell, who served on the original Thomas Jordan Committee of 1988-1989, um, Bill Linnell, who has a very strong interest in the trust and its obligations, Jack Roberts, who has experience in dealing with welfare recipients, Ed McComb, who is currently on our Manager's Investment, uh, Investment Advisory Committee, because we are going to look for recommendations on investments relating to the trust. Lester Jordan, who is a former town councilor. Jerry Petroselli is a lawyer and has a very good appreciation of the trust's obligations. And finally, David Pratt, who is department head of computer technology at SMTC. Having said that so briefly, I would move that we appoint two boards, commissions, and committees the people we have just presented for you. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'd like to say, Janet, if I may, just before we vote, that we should commend you and your two members. That's a tremendous report, and we're very happy with it. You're welcome. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you.
Item number 132, to consider a recommendation for a Republican member of the Board of Voter Registration and take any necessary action. Ms. Lane. Thank you. This fall, the council had appointed Carolyn Smith as the Republican representative to the board. And as Carolyn submits her resignation, she says it's due to her discombobulated schedule that she must resign. Uh, there are more responsibilities to the board than she had realized. And in realizing that, we appreciate that she um, uh, is going to resign because of that. Uh, the Republican Committee has nominated Ju Judith Dooley of 62 Ocean View Road. She would be serving the unexpired term of Carolyn to uh, continue until November 15, 1996. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Councilor McLaughlin? I just want to extend thanks to Carolyn Smith. Both she and Sharon Gower were at the Democratic caucus yesterday. I know it's sometimes a little bizarre for the Republican people to be <laughs> the Democratic Caucus, but it was very gracious of them to be there, and they helped us get things going. Thank you. Other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Item number 133, to consider a request from a citizen to prohibit parking on Route 77 near Richmond Terrace and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I received a letter back in November from Gregory Powell, who lives on Bowery Beach Road uh, in, in the area affected. Uh, the reason it hasn't been on the agenda prior to now is had some discussion with him at that time and whether or not he wanted to immediately go forward on the agenda, and he indicated he did not, but subsequently touched base again and indicated that uh, he would like for the council to consider it. Uh, he is the, here this evening if, if he would like to address any of the comments uh, in his letter. Uh, if, if the council wishes to act on this, it would take the form of an amendment uh, to the traffic schedule, uh, which is in the, the parking ordinance, or the, I don't forget the right name, but the, the traffic ordinance. Uh, so in, in the past, when these issues have come up, they have been referred uh, to the ordinance committee. Thank you. Councilor Dalby. I guess as a member of the ordinance committee, I would like to suggest that this, uh, as I read it through and, and have talked with Greg, is, is a very specific issue and, and not really is that much of a general ordinance issue. And I think we'd be better served if we uh, uh, table this to a uh, council uh, workshop so that we could all discuss it and its implications. Do you make that a motion? I'll make that a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Don't discuss it. You don't discuss the table. Well, that, I, I did that before I left tonight, so I wouldn't forget, and now you've done it again. All those in favor? 7 0, thank you. Number 134. To consider a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding deed, uh, dead end roads and take any necessary action. Councilor Dahlbeck. Thank you. Uh, after uh, considerable discussion uh, by the Ordinance uh, Committee and uh, based on the wording uh, provided uh, uh, by our uh, town uh, lawyer, uh, the Ordinance Committee voted two to one to recommend a new uh, uh, dead end road uh, standard, uh, which is presented here. And just very briefly, uh, since it is brief, I will read it. Uh, a dead end road shall be measured from from the end, got to be careful on these redos, from the end of the proposed dead end road to the closest uh, intersecting through road. The measurement shall include proposed roads and existing roads, public or private, whether within or without the proposed subdivision. And uh, I uh, want to add that this does relate to proposed subdivisions and, and uh, not existing uh, roads as I understand it. Um, I would like to move that this be forwarded to the planning board with a request that they return it uh, to the uh, council for final action by May 1st. Is right, I'll second. Is that right, Coach? <laughs> We're moved and seconded. Discussion. Uh, Councilor Lonell. I just would like to abstain. I may have a selfish interest in this. And so. Thank you. All those in favor?
to this ordinance. I know it says on new construction. Also, the way they're measuring it, I disagree with. If you have a sickle down at the end of the road, I say you should measure it from where the sickle starts to go around and not in back of the sickle out because those people down there, if they're on a sickle, could go around this way or they could go around that way. And I say they have two ways out. Thank you. Council Dalbeck. Just for the record, I would agree with Bill on his first point that this relates to new subdivisions and has, we have no intention of having it relate to existing subdivisions and I probably should abstain on that being in one that would be in violation, but I make the point anyway. Thank you. Councilor McLaughlin. I'm probably, on, I'm on one of those streets too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to vote on it anyway. Um, might the planning board, this could just be passed along by staff to the planning board, might it be appropriate to include in there something about this is effective as of the date of the adoption of the sentence or something like that, if that would clarify it more? I'm and I would assume it would be effective as of the date the council passes it. Yeah. Um, if, if for um, Councillor Jordan, that would make it clearer that it's only for new and proposed subdivisions after that date. That's something to think about. Something to think about. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Manager McGovern. Just a clarification. Actually, when an ordinance passes, unless it's an emergency, it's effective 30 days after the council adopts it. Other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? 6 0. Thank you. Those opposed? Will you abstain? No. Thank you. Those opposing? Oh, 5 1. Thank you, Bill. I was going to correct your counting, but I. <laughs> <laughs> you said six. I didn't have no hand up. I was resting here, and the other one was here. Let's do that over again, shall we, Bill? All those in favor? I'm going to look right at you now. Five. Those opposed? One. That's what I got was five, one. Second time around. <laughs> Number 135. Irv's never been wrong. That's right. <laughs> Debbie, didn't I say 5-1 the first time? You're right. Staining. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the cable. Is 135, to consider a report. Uh, wait a minute. Consider authorizing a proposed study of sewer system management and take any necessary action. Manager McGovern. Yes, when the last year's, or the current year's budget was adopted, the council directed me to have a complete review of potential alternative schemes for management and operation of the town sewer collection and treatment services undertaken. Uh, in looking at this issue, it, it's a major, major undertaking. We currently uh, forward to the Portland Water District approximately $1 million per year. Uh, you add that up over you know, 10 years or whatever that it may happen, well, we're looking at $10 million. Uh, it strikes me that it's an area that we should devote a lot of attention to in terms of ensuring that we're getting the best bang for the buck, uh, or whether or not we ought to be looking at some other service provider other than the Portland Water District. Uh, I have had dis uh, extensive discussions with Robert Hunter, uh, who formerly was the town engineer and is currently with the firm of Hunter Norris Associates in Portland. Uh, and he assisted me with developing, uh, after we had uh, a couple of meetings, a scope of services that would uh, look at the particular areas that I wanted to look at and then particularly how to go about that. Uh, the options would appear to be to retain the current system uh, with the water district managing and operating the interceptors, the pump stations and the treatment plants and the town managing and operating the collector sewers. Uh, a second option would be for the town to assume management and operation of all facilities. Uh, third, for the town to contract with an, another public body uh, for the service, uh, which would be one of our neighboring communities uh, or, or, the, or the sanitary district. And fourth, privatization of all or a portion of the facilities. Uh, there are a number of firms here in New England that provide contract operations uh, for individual uh, sewer system, and there's, there's been good and bad experiences uh, with that, uh, uh, been, as well as with all the alternatives. Uh, it's, it's my strong feeling that uh, this is a very worthwhile study. Uh, my sense is that 
because the district know, has known this is coming, uh, that there's already been downward pressure uh, on the sewer assessment. When the sewer assessment came for this January, it was reduced from the level that it was uh, the previous year. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a little competition. Uh, the, uh, I would therefore urge that uh, you authorize uh, this study to be undertaken uh, for a cost not to exceed $15,000. I'm proposing that $13,670 of, of the cost uh, come from the sewer expansion fund, uh, which were funds that were left over from when the Southern Cape Elizabeth sewer system uh, was developed, and that any balance necessary come out of the sewer fund undesignated surplus. Uh, this would not, it, not at all be uh, funded by the general fund. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Can I have a motion, please? I'll move that the study be granted. Second. Moved and second. A discussion, please. Councilor Dahlbeck. Yes, Manager McGovern's uh, figure is, is uh, somewhat different than the uh, figures I happen to see in the proposal, so I would like him to reconcile those. I, the, the proposal was a little bit higher than that. Well, no. Your figure is 20, am I correct? My figure is 15. 15. Uh, not to exceed 15. Uh, okay, this is for phases A and B? That's right. Yeah, the, the actual was 12 to 16, so we can we can catch up with it later. Right. The well, I'm, this sends the message we're not going to 16 uh, by authorizing not to exceed 15. Uh, the, the third phase would be to actually negotiate a service agreement to come up with detailed specifications for contract operation. That could be an ex extensive work, and I don't feel it's appropriate to authorize that until uh, we do better we, know the direction we're going. Do we have a course we're going in? Yeah. Good. Further discussion, please. Councillor Jordan. Yeah, I th I think the study is is needed or something is needed because I've said for years we're at the mercy of the water company and I felt that way when we got into it, but it was supposed to be the way to go, <clears throat> and uh, we've had a another study or two as far as the town goes, as far as sewers go. And I know this is to take care of the plants more. And possibility, i uh, thinking in the direction that sometimes you can do some of these cheaper than you can have them found out. And I just hope they'll get into that depth of the study. Thank you. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0, thank you. I request that we take item 137 out of order here and, and take it before number 136. So moved. Thank you. All those in favor? 7-0. Item number 137. To consider a report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to permit various uses at Fort Williams Park during 1994 and take any necessary action. Councilor McGovern. Oh, well, that's all right. Manager McGovern, we'll demote you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize. This, this was in your packet, and I inadvertently left it off the agenda uh, when I gave it to Deb, and I don't know why. It's uh, just a mind block. But anyway, uh, the Fort Williams Commission, uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission, has recommended these three uses. Uh, first, on weekdays, the evening of May 16th and the day of May 17th, the Ford AAA Student Auto Skills Challenge. Uh, that would be uh, in the park uh, on the green just adjacent to the lighthouse. Uh, this is a, an ex uh, the committee believes an exciting event. The, the students who would be doing this uh, generally have, have done this before in areas that hasn't been too much in public visibility and it, it's a very fascinating program and uh, AAA is really interested in doing it in, in a location that these students get more uh, attention for the fine work that they're doing. Uh, June 25th and 6th is an annual event, the Portland Amateur Wireless Association. Uh, this is Peter Eastman and some of his friends that set up a, a radio antenna and uh, uh, 
do wireless communication. Uh, they are planning to use the area uh, near the flagpole. Uh, the third request is the annual Engine One Labor Day Weekend Art Show, which is on Sunday, September 4th, uh, with the rain date of Monday, uh, Labor Day, September 5th. Thank you, Manager McGovern. We have a motion, please. I'll, I'll move that the uh, dates be granted. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Number 136. To consider entering into executive session to discuss property acquisition disposition issues and to continue the annual evaluation of the town manager and take any necessary action. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Council McLaughlin. If we are expecting to come back into regular session with the possibility of taking action on part of this executive session discussion, I would like to request that we keep the camera people around. Yes, we can take up the part that we might have uh, uh, to take a vote on first. Yes, good. If we could do that. I think that should be. Is that all right with the camera group for a short while? Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? We're going into executive session. Thank you. See how they do it, Jay? Can I suggest, uh, Irv, that that executive session gets split into two? Yeah. Let's take care of that. Let's take care of that first issue so that we're not holding people. That's right. That's what I. Yes. Right. Do you want?